it's hard to say uh, how the, what the outcome will be. Uh, it really, there's no precedent for this kind of broad trade discussions. In my adult life, I haven't seen where essentially all of our major trading partners, hard to know how that comes out. If it results in lower tariffs for everyone, that would be a good thing for the economy. If it results in a, you know, a, a broader, higher tariffs across a broad range of traded, traded goods and services that remain that way for a longer period of time, that'll be bad for our economy and for other economies, too. All right, it might be uh, stating the obvious, but Jerome Powell uh, not going off on any ledge here, uh, one way or the other, to characterize the, 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 the trade back and forth, saying that uh, resolving this with lower tariffs uh, would be the way to go. Uh, if it doesn't go that way, it would be not be the way to go. Sometimes we all, you know, opine on this, uh, but, but the bottom line is that's not a shocking statement. What would be if he said, no, this is not going to really affect anything. So what will happen? As this trade war escalates, because it's officially a war now, we're going tit for tat with a number of countries, including China. The senior fellow at the National Taxpayers Union, Maddie Butler, and Charlie Gasparino. Um, Maddie, uh, I think it's safe to say a war is on. Um, now, it, 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 could, it, it could be a short war, but it's on. What, what do you think? Well, I think that the chairman is doing his job and not trying to pontificate on the politics of the nature of the trade squirmish war, whatever the verbiage is that you want to use, there certainly is a conflict here. And the conflict is, what is the United States going to do about its trade policy? Now, all of this is happening against a very strong economy. We certainly can't refute that. And going into the summer, there's going to be a lot of more, there's a lot more financial news coming. We've got earnings reports that are coming out the next couple of weeks that are really going to show a lot of business activity here in the United States. That generally would be a source of optimism. But because this is all happening at a time when uncertainty has been injected into the economy because of the trade actions the administration has taken, the question is, what does the outlook look like beyond that? I think uh, Powell is really trying to cr uh, create an environment in which no matter what happens, the Fed can take a measured response, if any. Uh, but really, his job right now is to try and keep there from being an expectations game set, uh, set only on the notion that trade is going to be the only indicator the Fed is looking at, because, of course, there are certainly other economic indicators out there that result in us having a very strong outlook for the next couple months. You know, what's remarkable, Charlie, you reported on it a lot, is the markets so far willy-nilly move beyond this, maybe not too worried about this yet. What do you think of, of well, that? Well, if you look at those numbers you just had, the Dow and the S&P, they're, they're not up much since, uh, since the beginning of the year. And if you go back a little further, uh, the Dow and the S&P have been kind of flat, you know, since, uh, since Trump passed his tax cut plan. Um, and where the but it's uh, still the, been an amazing run up. I well, mean, it was an amazing a, run up. A pause but I, would be probably expected anyway, right? Not a six month pause. <laughs> I think that's the problem. Uh, well, I we're mean, still up better than four percent of the S and P five hundred. Yeah, 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 we are, and or it's probably a little less than that. So if someone's you go, like if, looking at the half empty glass. Well, if it's probably a little less than that if you go back to where he signed the bill. Uh, just just so you know, I've been crunching these numbers for. Just in preparation for this. Well, you thing. didn't <laughs> seem to know how the S and P 500 was doing, so because you're so yeah, interested yes, in, in, in trashing Dow. the board, yeah, I yeah. just want to use the numbers that are <laughs> that, 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 that correspond to my hatred for Donald Trump. Understood. Is that what you want to say? Uh, right. No, but I, what, what I'm saying is like. As the markets are, have shifted from tax cuts to digesting trade, they have traded kind of flat. And um, I think, I, I hate to make this a boring program, but I agree with your, your guest. I mean, it's just like Powell, Powell knows that a trade war is bad for the economy. He knows that, you know, we're probably going to get a very good GDP print in, in for the uh, second quarter, probably anywhere between 3 and 4%. I mean, I hear people talking above 4%. Right. I'm not, but, I mean, if it's even at 35 that would be very good. Um, and the question is, can that can that number be sustained? And does trade is is this trade stuff, which has real world impacts on workers and farmers? Absolutely. And uh, you know, I know it's it, it's it's ironic. It's designed to help workers and farmers, but it's doing just the opposite. If does that have a drag on the economy, which takes a three and a half percent to four percent GDP rate and brings it down to more Obama level uh, uh, GDP growth? And one other thing, I would say. I, th I still think it's unclear whether sustain long term this this tax cut plan is will produce the growth that it it, it 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 is I guess it is touted to because it was mostly a corporate tax cut and as you know they do stock buybacks rather than well, economic we'll watch about that. You know, one of the things we're hearing, Maddie, is that uh, mm -hmm. part of the meeting that he's going to have with some yep. members of the House Ways and Means Committee, including Kevin Brady, its chairman, is about a tax cut too, um, yep. one that would would, would would jigger a couple of rates or maybe expand some other allowances. Hard to say, very unlikely this year, I imagine, but, but they're, they're, they're plotting something. What do you think? 
Well, I think that there's still a lot of runway here to go on tax reform. Now, tax reform was the most important thing the president could have done for this economy in December. And you know that I've been talking about it for years, so I was excited to see that get passed into law. Moving forward, there are a lot of things that in the Tax Cut and Jobs Act we could see improved. And that's certainly a lot of uh, stability and confidence on the individual side. And that's what members of the House Ways and Means Committee have been talking about, making sure that the, the tax cuts that went into effect for families and businesses stay in effect outside the 10-year window. Because, of course, because of Washington budget antics, they were made temporary rather than permanent. But, you know, looking back at December, one of the main drivers of growth in the tax reform plan was not only the co that corporate tax rate cut, but also the way that we induce new investment in the United States. And the trade actions that the administration has taken has put a little bit of a deafening uh, effect on, on that tax cut. What we need is we need uh, businesses to have confidence to invest here. And we see in reports back from uh, businesses across the country and across the world that there's been a little bit of a softening in enthusiasm for investing back in the United States well, because one reason, of the uncertainty with trade uh, in the administration. Well, I'm going to push back on you here a little bit. One reason is because just because you give a business, a corporation, a corporate tax cut doesn't mean they're necessarily going to put it back into the co corporation. They do stock buybacks, which don't add to productivity. What, and that, so what, what happens and, with stock buybacks, right? Like, right? So what's what happens? The, you think stock, the stock what happens goes, with stock buybacks? Here's what happens. Sometimes, only sometimes, the stock goes up. You look at the Only history sometimes of stock. the stock goes up, but yeah. you know what happens? Because, because the you know why? It's an inefficient way. It's, a, it's not the most efficient way of, of creating, of of creating supply-side stimulus. And that's the problem that with stock buybacks. If he did, if, if Trump and, and Congress did a very large corp individual tax cut, according to, I mean, look at the numbers. You would get more consumer spending than you have now. And we should point one other thing out. The, we, we gave these corporations a huge corporate tax cut. And guess what happened to wages? They remain flat. Look at the wages, last numbers. Wages are starting wages to tick up flat. more than we've seen no, in the last eight two, years. But no, they're not. They're, 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 they're exactly here, where they Charlie. were. Charlie, I'll agree with you here, which is that 2. we need 2.9% year over year. We can argue yeah. to the cows come they're home. Right, they're all the right cows where they are I'll home. agree with you here right. that right. wages need Stop. to increase, and we hopefully said. All right. All right, Neil, we'll come back and we'll argue about it more.